Cougar fans, it is time. Touchdown! What a grab! It's time to raise your colors, raise your voice, and join in on the raucous roundtable about your favorite team, the BYU Cougars. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! It's time to tailgate. Cougar Tailgate, where BYU sports fandom lives. And here's your host, Lauren McClain. What's up, Cougar Nation? I'm Lauren McClain, and we're here to tailgate with you doing what we do best, talking all things BYU Cougars. For today's roundtable discussion, we have the Johnny Linehan. What's up, Johnny? What's up? And the wonderful Cleon Wall. Is that like the Ohio State University yep. or it is something exactly like that? It's, like a tra- that. it's a trademark now, <laughs> okay. registered the by ESPN. Johnny <laughs> Linehan, who was talked about by ESPN. You just keep getting more and more famous, you know? It's incredible how that Hey, works. we're almost at 20,000 Twitter followers. Hey! I'm trying to just make up the $8 a month that I now pay for the check mark, which I said I never would. And you're doing it. Is it I'm worth doing, it? I'm doing it now. It, well, the algorithm kind of makes it so if you want to be seen, you almost have to because mm. – Otherwise, you just get buried behind all of all types of bots. So well, with, I need the attention, Lauren. Well, with 20,000 followers, you should have one anyway. We round up. $8 or not. I you like know what it. I mean? Yep. <laughs> we round up. BYU basketball, guys, is rolling at 8-0, winning by an average of 32.9 points. The Cougars were picked to finish second to last in the Big 12 and are currently first in the net rankings and ranked 14th in the AP poll. Whoa! Who thought that was going to happen? I think it's easy to let our imaginations run wild with – how good we think this BOU team is or could be, but should we be tempering our expectations? So we're going to get right into the fan question, which is, are your expectations tempered with Big 12 play looming, or are you riding this BYU men's basketball wave? At D Young 1993 on X said, I'm enjoying this at the moment with full expectations that will come crashing down in Big 12 play. But it, but it always hopes for the best while expecting the worst. Crashing down. I mean, yeah, a little wow. dramatic. Yeah, that's that, what he it, thinks, it, though. I, no, no, no. I understand why that is. But I mean, BYU's playing so well right now. Let's let's focus on the good. I, I mean, I, I know you want to say, oh, well, let's be realistic, and it is realistic. But they're playing so well right now. Why do you want to say it's going to come crashing down? I know the Big Twelve teams are good, but are they that good? Have you look Have you looked at Oklahoma State? BYU's going to play them twice this year. Have you looked at Oklahoma State? They're not a good team. I think oh, BYU Cleon. can get two wins there. You just put you just gave Oklahoma <laughs> so now they State lose to yeah. Oklahoma State yeah, and exactly. football. What? Blame Cleon. <laughs> Blame Cleon for that. Keegs on X said BYU is doing exactly what they need to do in non conference as long as they can be competitive in most of their Big Twelve games, they still should make the tournament. What do you think, Johnny? What do you think? Are you because I know you're you're really following the team. Are you riding the BOU wave or are you like, I gotta really temper my expectations right now? I mean, if they don't make the tournament, then it really has come crashing down. That's the absolute floor, as it should be every year, as for basketball. But a little bit of a backstory. My first BYU game that I ever attended as a student was the Dalavadaga. Oh, no. <laughs> so what a memorable experience. <laughs> An Australian from St. Mary's coming and ruining my hopes. Oh, man. But ever since then, I've been hooked, right? Tyler Hawes, I remember watching him and then his Mormon message being like, this is the guy, and then I get to meet him. <laughs> so I, I love BYU basketball. But I've always been a little bit of a hater. I remember last year catching some heat when they started out well and then the wheels kind of fell off. And I was like, hate to tell you, say I told you so. This year is different. This year I'm actually buying everything that they're selling. They're, they are a good team this year. And I think that's the key is they are a team. Mm-hmm. And they have some phenomenal individuals. But as a team, collectively, they're playing some phenomenal basketball and it's fun to watch. They really are. What do you think, Leon? I think my expect- expectations have increased. Before the season, I watched a lot of BYU basketball last year. And I was just like, if this is the same team that's going to come back next year, they're in trouble. They have shown so much more promise. I mean, I, I maybe I'm way too high on this team, but I am just amazed at how they are dominating these non-competitive games. And in the competitive games, like the game against NC State down in Las Vegas, I mean, they were down double digits and they came back without Fuseni Traore on the on the squad. And he's a veteran and your low post score. And yeah. they were able to come back and... The, the team is playing way better than last year. There's so much confidence right now, too. Maybe it's the competition. May, I don't know. I, they don't look nervous or flustered when they kind of struggle or, you know, or have the uh, just kind of bad play. 
And the okay play on the offensive end, offensive end has been made up because they play really good team basketball on the defensive end. They're, they're shooting way better than last year. Uh, I, I know that there will be games where they're going to struggle shooting, but they have so many good shooters on their team right now. I just think, well, if one guy shoots bad, if Jackson Robinson shoots bad, I bet you Trevin Nell's going to be okay in that game. Or, or, or one of the other guys is probably going to be shooting okay in that game. You know... They're not just a three-point shooting team, too. I know I keep rambling on, but let me – I'll, I'll finish off with this. They're not just a three-point shooting team, okay? When you look at it, you got Foose. I know he's injured, but you got Foose. He's a low-post guy. you got Ali Khalifa. He's really good at passing, and he's good at disrupting any guys coming to him because the guy's just huge. Right. Uh, Noah Waterman, he's a hustle guy and a rebounder. He says, you know, when we talked to him just not too long ago for a pregame interview, he said, I, I bought in. I wasn't bought in last year. I'm bought in now. I'm a rebounder. And if I get a shot, great. And when he's getting his shots, he's making he's making baskets. And Spencer Johnson, wait, he's not a low post guy. Uh, but you know what? He's their like second best low post player right now. Yeah. He's really good at the guard line about going down to the low post, distributing, and if he's got a shorter guy on him, he's gonna take him to the basket. This team's strength is three point shooting and playing as a team right now. It's kind of like what Johnny said. This team this team's weakness, it's its lack of a star player. Like you know, you give it to someone and you say, go get me a bucket. I don't know if they have that guy. I, I mean, yeah, I just, Dallin Hall might be that one guy, but I, I'm not sure they really have that guy right now. I don't expect them to win the conference, but I'm feeling way better about this team that they could finish in the middle of the conference. Like, they could finish five, six, or seven, and I'd be okay with that. Yeah. That would be awesome if they were able to do That'd that. That'd be incredible. And they really are. They're very good from top to bottom. Their bench play has been incredible. The guys off the bench. How is Jackson Robinson coming off the bench? It's amazing. <laughs> Jordan he, Clarkson. Yes, he really is. <laughs> Just one of the one of the best players on the team. They And Mark Pope mentioned that they all bought in during the summer. They put in the work in the summer. And he said that really is where it all started. And that's why they're so good this season. Kansas, Houston, Baylor, and Texas are all currently ranked above BYU in the AP poll. As they should be. And BYU is undefeated. That should tell you how good this conference is. That's scary. And I don't think there's one BYU fan, maybe there is because there's some crazy fans, who expects the Cougars to run the table in conference play. It's not going to happen. There's some incredible, incredible teams. But I think we can still have expectations high and expect to lose some games. I think that's okay. The Cougars are so much better than we expected them to be. And they haven't even been in full health this season. They haven't had Foose. And like you said, he's he's their their star big in rebounding and scoring. And so hopefully they get him back soon. I think they're very well coached on the defensive side, shooting lights out from three. So I'd say I'm riding the wave, but I'm okay to be knocked off my board a few times when it comes to conference play. You guys okay with that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. I, I expect them to. I, I expect them to lose in conference. I mean, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna go play at Allen Fieldhouse against Kansas. You're going to lose. If you're gonna go play uh, at Baylor, you're you're gonna lose. I yeah. mean, that's okay. You, it's okay if you lose some of these games because they are so good, and it's fine because you learn from those losses. And you're playing against such good opponents too. This is not like the West Coast Conference anymore, where it's like you lose to Santa Clara, and it's just like, well, that's gonna hurt your tourney chances. You lose at Baylor, and it's like that's fine. <laughs> that's still gonna help your tourney chances because right. you're going down there and you're playing them. You don't get that in the West Coast Conference. Right. So Absolutely. Y- even if you lose, it's still, I guess you could kind of say, a win for BYU. So you're yeah. doing two losses, Oklahoma State. I mean, sorry, two wins against Oklahoma State, losses against Baylor and Kansas. That's what I've heard so far, Cleon, <laughs> from you. Hey, two and two right there. I won't go through the <laughs> other 14 games that they're going to play. Listen, I just don't want them to lose to Utah. That's all I'm saying. That's I'm got. Saying. That's got to be the focus. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, for sure. That's but U- Utah is a good team. They at are a at good Utah, team. it's going to be tough. I, basketball is the greatest sport in the world. It, it really is. Here's why: it's inside, so you take the weather out of it. As a punter, True. I hated the wind. So, and you can go play by yourself. You don't need somebody else to throw to. Or if you kick a ball fifty yards, you don't have to run and get it. You can just <laughs> shoot around. Like I, I love basketball. And the beauty of basketball and why March Madness is such a phenomenal tournament is really any team on any given day can beat anybody else. Mm-hmm. You might be able to say the same thing about some other sports like football every now and then you'll have like an Appalachian State like right. knock off Michigan or like a BYU beating Texas Tech, like these big <laughs> upsets. Oh but God. but really like in, in That can't be your example. <laughs> like it really in basketball, it really is like any given day. So yeah. I, I don't think anybody should expect BYU to run the table. I don't even know when the last team 
to win a national championship didn't lose either. Right. You had Kansas a few years ago go 30-0. and They didn't win it. So losses are actually good learning experience, and yeah. I'm excited for the team to fight the gauntlet, go through the gauntlet as long as I make the tournament. Last team to go undefeated and win a national championship, I think it was the 76-77 Indiana Hoosiers when Bob Knight was was coaching that team. I could get I might have the years wrong there, but it's right in that that era. It is it is so tough. You play, you know, nowadays, I mean back then they didn't even play as many games, but nowadays you're playing 40 games. Yeah. 40 games. That's you're, you're yeah, going to lose. You're going to lose. You're going to lose somewhere along the way. And and that's okay because you you learn from those experiences and you kind of kind of I think the the most recent one was I think was it Memphis? Uh, University of Memphis, I think, went undefeated and went to the national championship game and then lost in the national championship game. Is that with Derrick Rose? Man, I'm feeling bad. I, I, I'm not going to go any further than that. These are great polls. I that don't know. That is interesting. You yeah. could be totally right or totally wrong. So that it, might have been before I knew basketball was a sport, Cleon. I have no idea. Well, I already know that the 76 <laughs> thing uh, is before you your time. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, listen, let's not have that loss be against Utah, which brings us to our next segment, Buy or Sell. Number one is Jackson Robinson is the best player on this team. Think about that for a minute. Jackson is leading the team in scoring with 16.9 points per game. He's currently shooting 43.8% from three. He went 5 for 10 from 12 against San Diego State. He went off for 24-23 against Fresno State and NC State in the Vegas Showdown, and then most recently 19 points versus Evansville, which was a team high. Is he the best player on the team right now, Cleon? I'm going to sell, uh, not because I don't like Jackson. I think you could say he's the best shooter on the team right now, even though Trevin Nell, ooh, that's a tough one too because Trevin Nell's really good at shooting threes. But I'd probably say he's the best three-point shooter. Jackson, in my opinion, when he drives to the basket, it can sometimes still feel like an adventure. But the one thing that he's really improved on this year is driving, deking, and doing a fadeaway. Mm-hmm. He has really got that game down. But if you give it to him out there at the three-point land, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. He was very streaky last year. He's playing so much better I'm still not sure he's your best player, but I think he's your best shooter right now. Mm. What do you think, Johnny? I'm going to buy with an asterisk. <laughs> when he's hot, he's hot. Yeah, like Fresno he is. State, I feel like he had most of his points within a three-minute span. Yeah. He was like just Jimmer out there, right? Went down. <laughs> I think he had like three threes in a row. He was hot. So buy with an asterisk. I'm a bit of a Spencer Johnson fanboy just because he's been around for 25 years, but <laughs> he's also a phenomenal player. I think that's the great thing is I don't even think the team cares who's the best player. I mean, Jackson's right. coming off the bench scoring these points, right? I think that's his role, and he's the best at it on the team. So maybe he's the best at what he's been asked to do. So that's where I might buy it. Okay. I think he's the best six man. One of the best in the country probably right now. He, I, I'm going to sell it because I think there are so many – equally good players on the team. I think he's right up there. Like, I think he's right up there. But you mentioned Trevin Nell, Spencer Johnson, Dallin Hall. They have just some really good players. And you mentioned Cleon. There there's really isn't a star right now. There's a lot of parody on, on the team. And I actually, I'm digging it. I love that. Oh, I love that too. Yeah. I, you, when you play basketball, and you know this, Lauren, because you play basketball in high school. Yeah. So when you play basketball in like a high school setting or just even an open gym sometimes, the best is when you get a good team around you. Maybe you have one guy who's really good or girl, excuse me. Sorry, since Lauren's here. <laughs> How dare one, you? <laughs> one player who's really good, but you can feed off that player. And if you pass that ball around and you just get it going, that's so much fun. And mm-hmm. that's the way it is with BYU right now. They're passing that ball. They're trying to find the best shot they can find. And it just, it's it's fun to watch. I just worry that they just don't have that guy that you, again, that I will say, go out and get a bucket. The the closest guy, I think, is Dallin Hall because he did it twice last year and had two game-winning baskets last season, and that was as a freshman. And he's finally starting to round into shape, but I don't think he even I, – I, I think he's the closest because he's your ball handler. Right. Yeah. You know, he's the guy who's going to handle the ball and could drive to the basket or do something else with it. He's the closest thing you have to saying – Go out and get me a basket right now because it's not going to be Foose and it's not going to be some of these other guys out there. But it, it's so much fun to watch him. It's it, it, I, I, I get excited. I was just smiling last night watching that game. Like, this is so much fun. Ping, 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 three-pointer, good. You know, and I know that's not – even when they miss it, it's just like, oh, this is so fun to watch. 
Well, Sorry, still... I'm, I'm, I, maybe I'm getting too excited. I love good team basketball. I really do. Well, it makes it really hard for other teams to guard them. Yes. They don't know who to focus on because you have to focus on every single guy. Yeah. So there's always someone open, and you know they're going to shoot a three, and they're probably going to make it. All right, number two is BYU will make noise in the Big 12, including BYU. The Big 12 currently has four teams in the top 10 in Ken Palm, six in the AP top 25. BYU is projected to finish second to last in the Big 12. So, Johnny, do you think BYU will make noise in the Big 12? Are you buying it or selling it? Yeah, I'm all in on basketball. You know I was a hater on football. Love the team, <laughs> but a bit of a hater. And was right. You predicted they weren't but, going to bowl game, and we were all Yes, I'm so happy I'm correct. correct. Oh, my gosh, yes. What will I, I do in December? Being right. Uh, no, I'm, I'm all in on basketball. I, I actually think for them to make noise, they don't even have to – like they could come middle of the pack right. and make noise just because people were are counting them out. Yeah. Even if they go to some of these historic Big 12 venues and lose, if they're competitive, I think they'll make noise. So that's where, like, Cleon, you brought it up. You can have some quality losses and still yeah. have a strong resume, and I think that's all the noise BYU needs to make. I'm hoping that they make more noise than that and can get some upsets and then really get a taste for what it feels like to put some wins back-to-back, but I'm buying in that. Yeah. What do you think, Leon? Yeah, I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy making some noise in the Big Twelve. I, I think all you need, you're gonna get some big teams coming through the Marriott Center. You're gonna get Baylor, you're gonna get Texas coming uh uh Texas coming to the Marriott Center. I'm trying to remember the third team right now and I'll look it up, but you're gonna get some big teams. All you need is just one win against one of those big teams that's gonna come through the Marriott Center. And that's gonna make a huge difference. And they're playing so Kansas, well Kansas State also comes to Kansas State also comes to the Marriott Center. Man, I um, Oklahoma. No, Oklahoma is actually on the road, so I won't belabor the issue. But all you need is just one win against a really good opponent. Houston. Houston's the other team that's yeah. coming to the Marriott Center. All you need is one win against one of those teams, and I think that will be massive. It, it, it's just going to reverberate. Like, yeah, there's a reason why we were able to rank this team high early because we could see what their potential was, and so I think that's all you really need. All you need is one good win at the Marriott Center, and that, to me, is going to shake around the Big 12 like, oh, we didn't take this team seriously. And I think some of the other teams that they took seriously in the preseason, the, who they picked out, I think some of those teams are starting to come back to the pack a little bit. I'm, I'm Again, I'll talk about your Oklahoma State. I'll talk about your West Virginia. West Virginia has a good program, but they had some problems because their coach uh, got into some legal problems, and then he got fired, and, and everything else happened. So, they're kind of struggling right now, I, yeah. but they're going to be tough when BYU goes to play out at West Virginia. That's going to be a tough game. I, I think that all you need is like a couple of really, really close games against some good teams. And if you can upset one of those teams that we talked about, if you could get either Houston, Texas or uh, Houston, Texas or Baylor, if you could upset one of those teams at home, that would just be massive for BYU right now. Yeah, it would be incredible because any one of those venues on the road is going to be insane. Yeah. It's going to be so difficult to play. I mean, I'm sitting here talking about West Virginia. If BYU wins at West Virginia and and they're just kind of like a 500 team or barely above 500 team, that's still huge. West Virginia is a tough place to play a basketball game. So if if they could get a win there, that would be amazing. I I think the Marriott Center is going to really play a hard, it's going to be a hard place to play for any team that comes to the Marriott Center. If BYU can in, in any way finish like seven and two at the Marriott Center, that would be amazing. It would really, really be amazing. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And coming up is the game against Utah. And here's our last one for buy or sell. Will BYU defeat Utah at the Huntsman Center this week? So this is the only out-of-conference game that BYU is not favored to win. Utah has a 53% chance of winning, according to ESPN Analytics. Johnny, do you think BYU is going to get it done? At the University of Utah. Yeah, it's going to be there a, a real test for them. I know they've had some tests, you know, down in Vegas where where they were down NC State. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. While they've been smoking teams, they've been expected to beat the teams. They've yeah. been playing really good basketball, but this is kind of the the one where they're not really expected to win. And in conference play, that's where we're going to get to see are they really made? Who, what are they made of when the back's against the wall? So I think this is going to be a good test. I'm buying it though. I yeah. actually, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm hopeful that that BYU can get the job done. We don't rely on the three as a team, but we're going to need that three ball this this week to get it done. So oh, yeah. I'm I think they're pretty hot. I think they get the job done. I'm I'm wearing the blue goggles, but I don't expect it to be easy. 
Yeah, I'm buying it. Even though the University of Utah is selling tickets, I think, for $3. They're like, come one, come all. In this economy? Please. <laughs> We got to fill this place with red. They really don't want because they, I mean, they don't have great attendance at their games, but I think they really, really want this game to be full of of uh, Utah fans. So we'll see what happens. But no foos for BYU. Brandon Carlson should be available to play for the Utes. So that's that's dangerous there. But I'm buying it. I think they could do it. I think there's a fantastic team. I think it's definitely going to be a lot closer than the 32.6 average points that BYU is used to winning buys. I, I definitely think it's going to be closer than that, but I'm I'm buying it. I'm all in on that. Cleon, what do you think? Uh, yes, I will buy it, but it's going to I this one's going to be a really tough game. I mean, take away the fact that BYU or excuse me, Utah barely barely beat Southern Utah the other night. I think Utah's a I think they're a good basketball team. This is going to be a really tough game. It'd be nice to see a lot of BYU fans in the Upper Bowl because they usually <laughs> Uh, you know, put flags down there. So anyway, never mind about it. It'd be nice to see a lot of BYU <laughs> fans up at the Upper Bowl. I think this is going to be, I, I agree with you, Lauren. I think it's going to be a close game. BYU is going to need to play, I don't know about their best game of the season, but it's got to be right up there. They have got to play uh, just confident basketball there because this is their first road game of the season. And it's going to be hairy in there. And if they come out with a win, even if it's by one point, that's got to give you massive amounts of confidence as you finish off the non-conference season. Absolutely. It's time for a quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk about Cougs in the news and our favorite BYU-Utah basketball memories. This is Cougar Tailgate. Welcome back to Cougar Tailgate. I'm Lauren McLean alongside Johnny Linehan and Cleon Wall. And Cleon, this segment's for you. Wow. It's called Thanks. Back in My Day. Tell me about the memory that sticks out to you the most from a BYU Utah basketball matchup because this is for you. We'll start with you. That is so nice of you. Thank yep, you. you I, bet. Can I can I name three? Sure. I will name three. T- February two thousand two. Yeah. BYU's down forty seven twenty six at the Marriott Center to Utah. They come storming back. Mac, Matt Montague, if anyone remembers that name, Matt Montague makes a three-pointer. This was BYU's starting point guard who is not known for making three-pointers. He makes a three-pointer to pull it within one to make it 61-60 in favor of Utah. And then he dishes off to pass Danny Ainge for the most assists to Eric Nielsen for the game-winning basket, and BYU ends up winning that game. It was mm. it was phenomenal because this was coming off the years where Utah was dominant in basketball and BYU was an afterthought. And, you know, this wasn't the same Utah team, but to finally see BYU kind of climb that mountain and make a massive comeback and to win that game, and the two guys who get hit the, the shots and make the plays to win the game are the only two seniors on the team. And it was just, wow. I just remember that. And it was so phenomenal. Uh, I'm going to have to say <laughs> January 2016, Nick Emery punch, punches Brandon Taylor at the Huntsman Center, <laughs> gets ejected, which eventually leads to BYU and Utah taking a year off from basketball because Larry Kriskoviak could not stand, ADK. could not stand the fact that this would happen. And that would, that, I, I was, I was mad at Nick and I was mad at Larry because I'm like, really, you're going to let this ruin the rivalry right here. And no, it was not cool that Nick did that. But yeah, I I will never, ever, ever, ever forget that. But he had to protect his players. Yes. Yes, he did. (laughs) Uh, Lastly, December 2019, Delta Center, now called the Delta Center, uh, Yoli Child's dunk uh, over Utah that just still sits in my memory of one of the my favorite dunks because he posterized oh, yeah. um, someone. And I can't remember who it was right now, but I will always, always remember that. So those are three of my uh, memories of BYU-Utah. If I actually put my brain to work, I might come up with more, but those are the three off the top of my head. Those are good ones. Johnny was in elementary school at that first one you mentioned, but the other two he should recognize. Johnny, what was <laughs> your uh, <laughs> what's your memory of the BYU-Utah game? My... Man, I have like two memories, but I only witnessed one. Uh, the I'll start with that one. It is the Yoli dunk, right? Yeah, we we smoked Utah that that year, and that was good because they kind of had a. I feel like when I moved to the United States, things went downhill on the Deseret Duel. We we started losing <laughs> literally everything to Utah. It's my fault. Just as I started to care about the rival, we start losing everything. So I remember watching games where BYU got smacked against Utah. 
uh, my first years with my roommates. But that Yoli dunk was nice because it was like, all those years of frustration, <laughs> posterizing. That's I don't right. know. I think his name was Novak, and oh. and we smacked him by 15 points in the in the Vivint Arena, now Delta Center. So that was pretty sweet. The other memory that I have, just because I watch it, and when I go shoot hoops, I pretend I am him, is Jimmy Fredette hitting, yeah. hitting the half court shot right at the buzzer <laughs> to put up BYU by you know more than double digits going in at halftime. I never saw that. I didn't know about Jimmer. I didn't know who he was. Never saw Jimmer play. But I've watched that clip so many times. So when I'm doing my shoot around at Vasa by myself, <laughs> I'm like, I'm Jimmer. This is me beating Utah. So even though I didn't see it, it had a big impact oh on me. Gosh. That's why I remember it. <laughs> that is also my biggest memory because I was there at the Huntsman Center for that. I was a student. And Jimmer Mania was just insane. Like, there there needs to be a documentary on that, and I'm not kidding. It's just, it was unreal. It was like Lynn Sanity, but it was. in oh. Mormonville. <laughs> oh my gosh. But around the country, like, they, people loved him. 47 points in the Huntsman Center, January 11th, 2011. Half-court shot, heading into the half, nails it, turns around, just walks out. Just like watching, like, an explosion. Like, ah, yes, Isn't it just was. So cool. It was so satisfying to watch it doesn't yeah i'm not a utah hater i'm really not but it is very satisfying when byu does right. very well against the university of utah and jim are just yeah those years were great years uh for byu basketball okay guys we're gonna go to our segment called coogs in the news number one byu defensive end tyler batty announces he will be returning for his last year of eligibility johnny how important is this for the continuity of year two in Jay Hill's defense. We're switching a little bit here to football, but how, how important do you think that is that he's deciding to come back? I think it's huge. I mean, one of the captains of the team. Last year, I remember getting frustrated against Texas Tech when he, he had that personal foul, and I remember saying out loud, you have a C on your chest. Like, why are you doing this? <laughs> and then the ref said, he got spat in the face. I was like, hey, all right, you, you do you, Tyler. That's sweet. I would have done the same thing. I'm actually glad. But, man, towards the end of the season, especially against the Oklahoma schools, he came alive. Mm -hmm. He was the Tyler Batty who I know he can be. So I'm excited for him to continue to have that chip on his shoulder, come back again, and and lead the defense. We need it. Spitgate. Uh, yeah, Cleon, what do you think? I think it shows that he believes in Jay Hill and himself. It also shows that Jay Hill's a pretty good salesman, and he was able yeah. to sell him on, please come back, I need you. You know, Tyler could look around and basically say, uh, I don't know how things are going to go next year. But he basically looked around and said, you know, they're not going to get worse. They're going to get better. And I'm going to be a big part of that. And I think that's that's big for Tyler to be able to big for Tyler and both and Jay Hill to basically say, yeah, we think we can do this next year. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I love that he's coming back. He's a great leader. And I think a lot of the guys look up to him. I think he's going to be fantastic for the incoming freshmen and incoming transfers. So that's a big win for BYU. Number two, LeBron James tweeting about Puka Nakua. He tweets, congrats Puka on breaking the team rookie record for receiving yards. Johnny, I know you read that and saw that on Twitter. What was your re your reaction when you saw that? Well, Puka's the man. Yeah. Puka also has no idea who I am, but <laughs> Kai knows who I am. So by relation, Puka knows me. Puka's the man. What a phenomenal season he's having. What a what an absolute stud and a weapon. And it's super cool because all of us at BYU and, and us BYU fans knew how great he would be. I actually have a hint that LeBron has no idea who he is. <laughs> You've seen some of the LeBron James stuff where he's so like, true. look at these tight ends, and he's just reading off like a Bleacher Report post, uh, Travis Kelsey, uh, <laughs> and he's just like reading all of these lists. But it was still pretty cool to see, you know, the GOAT of basketball, especially the modern-day GOAT, to, to tweet about that. I, I know it's because they're L.A. and L.A., but pretty cool. And he was there. Yeah. He was at the game. Yeah. So it's it's actually pretty cool. Puka has some really interesting ties. He calls Dana White his uncle. So Puka's actually been really? in the know for That's a long right. time because one of his best friends in high school was Dana's son. So he like FaceTimes Dana some media days. It's actually That's really bizarre. cool. So Puka is no surprise to be known by some famous celebs, but pretty cool to get a shout out from LBJ. And what do you think, Cleon? Does this stuff matter when it comes to like BYU recruiting? Do you think do you think that's a big deal? Um, I, for LeBron or Puka? No, I'm just yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I it might draw more interest. Maybe guys will say, "Oh wow, LeBron's shouting out Puka. Puka's having a great season." 
hey, what's this thing going on at BYU? Maybe you have kids that are more interested, yeah. whether that translates into guys actually joining the team. I think that's that's a bit of a stretch because they've got to buy into the team. They've got to buy into the university. And, you know, some players are just not going to be able to do that. Oh, and there's that NIL thing, too. So. <laughs> yeah. I think it brings interest. I think kids watching, they're not like, what college did this guy play for? For the most part, they're not going to care. But I think the coaches, if they do a good job out recruiting, they say, hey, you know, Puka Nakua for the L.A. Rams. LeBron James <laughs> tweeted about him. He was a BYU product. So I, I, you know they use stuff like that in the recruiting, you know, process. So, who knows? I think it's cool, and I think kids these days would think that's really cool, too. All right, the last one is Zach Wilson announced he will start against the Texans on Sunday. He clearly didn't want to play for the Jets, but head coach Robert Saleh said he is fired up. Johnny, what did you think when you saw that Zach Wilson was getting the start again? Uh, burn the Jets to the ground. <laughs> I'm actually excited for Zach, but... Man, what a what a tough situation for that guy to be in, and I, I hope he does really well. I, I I mean, he's just been the absolute scapegoat. Has he played great? No. Would Aaron Rodgers have played great? Arguably, no, as well, yeah. right? So he's kind of done what he can behind that offensive line that I think I could start for. So <laughs> I'm not super stoked on the Jets, right? Uh, they have a good defense, um, but they couldn't even protect Aaron Rodgers for four plays. So <laughs> now they're throwing their you know second round ra- second pick in the draft uh, under the bus so I'm, yeah. I'm excited for Zach to move on so hopefully he sticks it to him has a good end of the season yeah. and stays ups healthy. his stock stays healthy and then yeah. can go to a place where they actually and, and by the way Johnny I, I just got a text from the Jets they're looking for a washed up punter <laughs> um, they say they're really interested in you uh, are, are you still feeling that way about the Jets right now J-E-T-S <laughs> Jets 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 man I man I think I could play offensive line for the Jets before I could punt for the Jets. <laughs> I think I could too. <laughs> right? No, uh, I actually didn't. I actually didn't see that 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 came out. I did listen to Aaron Rodgers on the Pat McAfee show yesterday, saying there's a lot that the media portrays about people's character and about things that they say that are taken out of context. So who really knows what's been what's been happening behind the scenes? But I know Zach's actually responded really well. He's he's shown a lot of maturity this year and how he's responded, particularly to the press after some bad games. But I, I think he still has all the talent. He's still young. He just hasn't had a chance to learn yet. So either the Jets give him that opportunity or someone else will. Yeah, I agree. What do you think? I, I think this is a no-win situation. Um, but he's played to pay f- – let me try that again. He's paid to play football. So he needs to play football. He needs yeah. to go out there and show that he's a team player, whether that's with the Jets or to show other teams, hey, listen, I'm willing to do this even though – I'm in a no-win situation right now. He's not one of those guys that's popular enough. He's not Aaron Rodgers, basically. He's not Aaron Rodgers. He can't go out there and say whatever he wants to say, and people will lap it up whether they agree with Aaron Rodgers or not. He's not going to be that guy. If he refuses to go out and play, that just looks horrible for him. So go out there, do your best, and hopefully you either come up with a win, you gain you, you gain confidence back, and maybe someone out there is going to see him and say, yes, we want to trade for him, or somehow we want to pick him up and we want to put him on our team. Yeah, that's what I think. I, I, like, I want him to go out there and play. Like you said, he's being paid to play. I want him to be a team player, and I want him to just go crush it these last few games of the season, and, and hopefully somebody will see that. Okay, guys, thank you so much. That does it for us today. Thanks again to Johnny Linehan and Cleon Wall for coming on the show with me. Carter Bond and Tori Kimball help produce this episode with senior producer Cleon Wall. Hey, that's me. You can join the Cougar Tailgate wherever you get your podcasts on Apple Tune and Stitcher, Spotify, or on BYUradio.org. Cougar Tailgate is a production of BYU Radio.